Sending up with one towards the centre. Gates open, they're off in the Sky City, Auckland Guineas. No early speed here by He's a Doozy. Drop to the tail with Tony B and Tell Me Something Boy. First away, Dragon Queen to lead out. Tell All, the favourite is right there. Out a bit deeper, though, is kicking up along the inside edge of Wonder. Jason Beltry between runners. And now Screaming Eagle on a mission to lead. So at the end of about 300 metres, settling down midfield is on display from Rocket Spade. Back near the tail of the field here is He's a Doozy. Then came Tell Me Something Boy. And two lengths away, Tony B is last. They work up on top of the rise towards the 1,000 metres. Spread out over 10 lengths and Screaming Eagle made the lead by two. And in second spot, Tal Law sits second up on the outside of Dragon Queen. One and a half away, second favourite, Jason Beltry keeps a, a weary watch here on the uh, favourite Tal All. Then fifth over on the rail, next was Edge of Wonder, two back to Rocket Spade. On display back fourth last here from Tell Me Something Boy, then he's a doozy. And last of all is Tony B. Seven lengths over the, over the field as they come down towards the corner. 5.50 left to run in the Sky City, Auckland Guineas. And the pacemaker is over on the outside now Tell All ranged up to Screaming Eagle two links away out wide Rocket Spade looks to run on coming out also with it is uh, the, the next one as they head down the straight is on display Jason Beltry in behind these followed by Dragon Queen and then Edge of Wonder 200 to go Rocket Spade made the lead Jason Beltry's warming up from on display Tell All and Dragon Queen it's Rocket Spade Jason Beltry's trying to close but can't get there Rocket Spade wins the Sky City Auckland getting second over Jason Beltry I think on display third and a nice run. We are close up in fourth photos here between either Tell or, or Screaming Eagle and Dragon Queen. Then came Edge of Wonder. Back in behind those. Tell me something, boy, from Tony B. And he's a doozy. We'll be the last of them home. You'll find that the three Rocket Spade for Hermitage Thoroughbreds Proprietary Limited. Lance O'Sullivan and Andrew Scott. And Craig Grills picks up another black type victory here at Ellerslie this afternoon. Super win from Rocket Spade, and he just had that great stretch about him. He was really willing to the line. But I'm Jason Beltry, who was uh, who was pretty good in running second as well. But he just keeps on improving. Rocket Spade. He's run, you know, hardly a, a poor race in his career. He was just luckless in the 2000 Guineas when uh, getting into traffic and. Boy, he produced yesterday, he presented in terrific order and raced like that too. We have managed to get Lance O'Sullivan on the phone as well. And of course, our punters will be looking at betting into this Levin Classic market. Uh, Lance, thanks for joining us again today. Uh, first of all, uh, we spoke to you yesterday, Levin Classic, more than likely off the table or is it completely off the table? Uh, completely off the table. I, it was never on on um, on its radar. That's what Andrew and I were planning for the horse, and um, you know it was a matter of of uh, you know trying to set him a path to the Derby, and we just didn't think that um, you know a, a trip away and um, you know clo close proximity of his last run would be suitable at this stage. You must have been so proud of him yesterday. Jeez, he, he, was, uh, he was absolutely trucking come to the bend. Uh, Craig Grills has opted to go fairly early, but, geez, he's finished the race off beautifully. Uh, what was your reflections on it when you've gone back and, and had a good think about uh, what you saw yesterday, Lance? Well, I, th I think we were just pleased to, to see him do that. You know, he sort of he showed potential at the trials. He trialled uh, particularly well, especially that day at... Um, to check out where he really quickened and I think the main thing we just wanted to see him quicken like that yesterday and you know his, his, his progress that he was making on the track at home it certainly suggested that he was going to put up a good performance and, and perhaps do exactly what he did but until he actually gets out there and do it you know you never know but I, I still think he's got a wee way to go you know to progress he's got to learn to settle a lot better than what he did especially now that he's going to be have to run a little bit further um, you know, so he's still got a wee way to go in that department, but it was just pleasing to see him that at least we know that he does have the ability and also first time around Allergy, although he was up there and he did have a, a, a canter around two or three, a uh, couple of weeks ago, but it's uh, good to see him sort of handle the undulation first time having under race back conditions here and do it well. OK, and hopefully we might see him there at uh, the beginning of March as well. Lance, uh, how did he come through yesterday's race? Have you had a chance to, to put an eye over him this morning? Yeah, yeah, he, um, look, he said he trotted up. He's 100% sound, uh, and he never left a note, which is a pretty good sign. You know, he, ate, he ate his whole feed, he got home, and, um, you know, he never left a note. And, uh, so that's a pretty good sign. You know, he's a cult, and when you look at him as a 
you know, so as a physical individual, he does need to remain a cult. He, uh, although he does, you know, think of the girls from time to time, but sort of physically, um, he needs that to uh, maintain his strength. And uh, I think, you know, whether he does remain a cult all the way through, we we'll just have to wait and see. But it's certainly going, going to be an aid to him at this stage. Okay, so so using that sort of that that testosterone to basically uh, sort of keep him sort of big and, and strong. Is, is he a good doer, or how is he around around the stable? Uh, look, I'll tell you, it's very good. Look, there's only a couple of people in the stable that actually handle him, Andrew and one other, and um, you know we're very mindful of keeping them away and, and separated from uh, any fillies or mares around, around the place. And you know, while we've got him uh, sort of locked away like that, he seems to be very good. And um, you know, he's I think he was probably worse three months ago than what he is now. Now he's sort of not rolling out. And you know, yesterday at the races, Andrew. Uh, took control of him himself. He took it upon himself to, to say, well, yeah. you know, I'm going to strap him, I'm going to lead him around before the race and try and have the horse in the zone where he's not thinking about anything else. And it certainly paid dividends there yesterday. OK, yeah, Lance, also you had a couple of horses uh, going around uh, in the Hermitage Colours in the railway, uh, Summer Passage and also Spring Heat. Uh, your reaction to how they performed yesterday? Well, if you, if you look through the stats, Springhead, I think she, she ran the quickest last 600 metres of the race. So, um, you know, she did lack a bit of luck in the straight. She didn't get clear clear uh, air for, for quite some time and, you know, would have definitely finished closer than what uh, what she did. She'd have run a clear fourth, there's no doubt about that, uh, at the worst. And she will proceed when we've decided to carry on and take it down to the telegraph of Trentham. Uh, Summer Pastor's looking tr trotting up this morning. He wasn't 100% behind which is of uh, some concern and um, not as bad as what, it, what he was last time out after he pulled up from uh, counties. But uh, there's certainly something there that's not 100% with him. So okay. uh, we won't be in a hurry to rush him back. It would probably be uh, the conquer court at the earliest back at Ellerslie. Uh, hopefully we'll get him there. We'll just have to wait and see. And, of course, Charles Subao will, um, you know, I think, you know, was in the stewards room yesterday, watched the, the head on and the, the probably... You know, he got away from the barrier very awkwardly and um, it was just one of those things and his run was, you know, particularly good but so no, no firm plans were to with him at this stage. OK, uh, Charles Ryder, A-OK -okay after yesterday? Uh, look, look, he, he um, you know, he, he's, he raced like a, like a tired horse. You know, he had to work pretty hard for the first section of the race but he certainly was struggling a fair way from home and, you know, he's been a great old horse and he's been, um, you know, a great stalwart of the, of, the, of the stable and you know just whether he's coming to the end of it we'll just have to wait and see but um, you know he's, he's certainly better than that but you know he is getting older and he's done it there's been a lot of mileage in those legs so um, you know he's probably you know it's hard to hard to say that uh, you know he's got his best years of racing in front of him he's just, as I say he's done a lot of racing and he, he possibly may be coming to the end of it.